morning and welcome to this morning's reflection. What does the word revelation mean in the biblical context? What does the word revelation mean in the context of the last book of the Bible? The word revelation in Greek is apocalypsis. Apocalypsis. This really is the title of all of Scripture, Apocalypse. And what does Apocalypse mean? It means the revelation of what took place in the Incarnation, hidden in humble form. The word literally means to uncover. All scripture is one one way or another apocalyptic or revelation. All scripture uncovers God for us. In parallel with the word revelation is the word prophecy. Now what does this word prophecy mean and how does it relate to the word revelation? The words have parallel meanings, but there is just a slight difference. A revelation emphasizes seeing, and a prophecy emphasizes hearing. A prophecy is not a prediction. Prophets are not fortune tellers. A prophet declares, thus saith the Lord. He speaks God's words into the present moment, not for yesterday or for tomorrow, but for this moment. In Revelation 1 and verse 3 and 22 and verse 10, it says the time is near. Near meaning at hand. This doesn't mean far off in the future. It means now. The time is now. If we make the prophetic if we make the prophetic word predictive, then we are procrastinating and putting distance between ourselves and the application of what we read. We are putting off dealing with it and rather leave it to some future time. Revelations 3 and verse 20 is that very famous part of Scripture which says, Behold, I I stand at the door and knock. Jesus is standing and knocking now. And he does stand and he does knock now in every moment of our lives. There are predictive elements in some prophecies, but they are always in service to the present moment. The Bible warns against a neurotic interest in the future and an escapist fantasy into the future. It forbids trafficking with persons who make predictions. All of that is very clear and well known. Yet some insist on making an exception with the book of Revelation and will read it as if it were a prediction. Revelation is not a prediction, but an awareness that the future is breaking in upon us now. The belief that the resurrection appearances of Christ are not complete. This belief is found throughout Revelation and it makes life good. When we are experiencing a resurrection appearance, we can accept our whole present and find joy not only in joy itself, but also we can find joy in sorrow. We can find 
happiness, not only in happiness, but also in pain. In other words, because Jesus' resurrection is not complete, we are still finding ways in which to be resurrected through Christ. There are always new possibilities in the present moment. The future is the goal of present events. Today's decision to trust God is a decision pregnant with the future. Scripture is God's word to us, and it's God's word to us now, for us living today. It is not a word for tomorrow. It's for now. We are to read scripture with awe, ready to hear and to believe. Rather than curiosity seekers looking for fine thoughts from saintly ancestors that may hint at ways in which we can improve ourselves today. The Bible consists of 66 books written over a millennium in three languages by numerous authors and so the variety variety of style and the variety of content is enormous. And it is not unlikely that the reader will end up with a mass of different impressions but no single picture with thousands of vivid details, but no plot, with a dazzling truth, but no wisdom. Revelation is a defense against such a final randomness and incoherence. Scripture does not just stop. It has a satisfying ending in the last book of the Bible. Revelation has 404 verses and 518 references to earlier scripture. And if we are not familiar with the Old Testament, we cannot understand Revelation. We should not read this book if we have not read the previous 65 books. It makes no sense to read the last book of the Bible apart from the whole. Just as it would make no sense to read the last chapter of the novel having not read the preceding chapters. John did not make up his visions of dragons, beasts, harlots, plagues and horsemen out of his own imagination. The Spirit gave him these images out of Scripture, that he he knew these images well, and he saw their, their significance in a fresh way. Every line in Revelation is, is mined, mined out of the rich layers of earlier ages, of earlier Scriptures. There are no direct quotes in Revelation from earlier scriptures and there are no direct quotes because John submits himself to the scripture. He does not just repeat it. It is recreated in him when he becomes someone through the assimilation of the scriptures. And so as we consider the value of Scripture and the value of this last book in Scripture as it is a a final summary of the whole of Scripture. May we use it as an example of how submitting ourselves and allowing Scripture to become part of the very fabric of our lives, how that finishes us, how that sets us on our way, to walking the path that we have chosen and that God has chosen for us. Amen.